Hello everyone, this is Sandra Lopez, I'm an ESL teacher and I would like to welcome all of you to our online training about blogging as a dialogic online tool to create a community of ESL writers. This is a professional development for ESL teachers. As middle school teachers, we all know that today our teenagers are especially very active. So let's start with some food for thought. In middle school, teenagers are characterized by their dynamic nature. Therefore, learning how to blog should be an active experience too. According to Penrose 2007, bloggers teach us that information and knowledge are not static items. Moreover, this same blogger shows us that a blog is a pliable writing genre one that can be adapted to a variety of online occasions, purposes, and situations. So let's think about what are those occasions, purposes, and especially situations that we normally face in the classroom with our kids. And as we go through this training, please leave your thoughts of Pembroke's quote on Padlet number one. The link to the Padlets is below in this video description. I'm pretty sure before any teacher starts using a blogging platform, some questions like the following might arise. Why should students be allowed to blog? We are going to watch two videos. The first one is why let our students blog, and the second one is about identity and blogging in the ESL classroom. At this point of this online training, your task is to summarize two primordial reasons for you to allow your teenagers in your ESL classroom to blog. Please use Padlet number two to state your reasons. Additionally to all the reasons explained in the previous two videos, uh, when we talk about blogging in middle school, there are some other reasons that we have to consider. In first place, blogs help teachers prevent age-related issues such as cyberbullying, marginalization, gender inequality, and race disparity. On the other hand, blogs are also tools to improve class discussions, peer learning, and literacy skills in general. Here is another information that I would like to share with all of you today. The very low results on the achievement level in writing in 12th grade by the NAEP in 2011, which is another reason for ESL teachers to find and to propose alternative reasons for students to improve their writing skills. Now that we have identified the problem, here are some of the suggestions. Jones 2012 describes seven fundamental steps to develop a successful blogging experience. In first place, he recommends teachers to choose a platform based on student needs and available resources. Second, create a writing community, which can be the same community that you work with in the classroom your ESL class. Third, create a meaningful writing assignments. Four, use evidence-based writing strategies. And the last uh, three steps refer to support online composition with assistive technology, teach students to create and respond to comments, and finally, maintain, evaluate, and tweak the blogging experience for long-term success. As part of our food for thought, um, we are going to reflect on another Penrods quote who stated that a students must adhere to certain stylistic, rhetorical, or mechanical conventions in classroom settings on their blogs, they can practice these skills and strategies in a real-world context. 
Back to Jones 2012, who suggests teachers to choose a platform based on student needs and available resources, I would like to recommend EduBlogs, which is the platform that I will be using with my ELL students. EduBlogs offers a free PD professional development courses for teachers and students to learn how to set up accounts, pages, write posts, comments, improve connections with parents. Also, it teaches us about copyright and some essential tools to be used in the ESL classroom. Please follow the link provided at the bottom of this YouTube video description to learn more about how to utilize EDU blogs in the classroom. Blogs as an emerging genre. Traditionally, our students are used to write in linear directions, to use an unimodal style that presents writing as a horizontal structure. However, Web 2.0 tools offer a different perspective and approach to writing because they are multimodal, visually enhanced, and texts are asynchronous. Blogs can be used to facilitate the comprehension of core topics in middle school. For example, in building vocabulary strategies, students can follow the next steps. Number one, choose a core topic in ELA, math, or science, assisted by your ESL teacher. Number two, ask students to upload a picture related to the core topic in the same areas. Number three, have students to write a comment about your picture related to the core topic. Number four, write a six line paragraph about your picture. Number five, post your picture comment, and paragraph. Number six, review your peer comments with your teacher. Jones 2012 describes a successful experience with blogs that contains recommendations for two platforms that can also be used by teachers. They are Google Blogger and WordPress. It is necessary to consider the advantages that each one of these platforms offers. For instance, Google Blogger works with Gmail accounts only, but it doesn't allow to create many pages as needed by the teachers and students. Conversely, WordPress works with any existing email addresses and it offers multiple pages in a single blog. If you are interested in having this successful experience as a reference for your work, I invite you to find the article link at the bottom on this video description. As we have noticed, blogs can be easily adapted to any academic tasks. In fact, Perigoy and Boyle 2013 argue that with a classroom blog, your class can discuss classroom projects, books, and other activities and work collaboratively on just about anything you're doing in your class. Therefore, it is up to the ESL teacher to choose the core topics and to develop a joyful experience in the ESL classroom. Even while working with blocks in the ESL classroom, it is necessary to follow the process approach for writing, with its main steps described by Judera 2011. Free writing, drafting, 
feedback, revising, editing, and finally, publishing. By following these steps, we will guarantee the quality of our students' writings. Lastly, blogs offer unlimited advantages for students and teachers such as there is no space or time constraints, they are generally used easy to use, blogs allow exchange of ideas, experience and knowledge, is the perfect forum for multiple perspectives and information sharing, and blogs also provide time for participants to reflect on learning processes. It is very convenient. Moreover, the importance of blogs on educators lies on the flexibility of participation. Uh, it requires only basic technology skills. Blogs are beneficial to have interactions with educators from different fields. Educators in diverse fields are able to share insights. Blogs allow time to think about the information that has been shared. And finally, blog supports educators' busy schedules and educational demands. I'm going to end this presentation by talking about um, the conclusions of this work. In general, blogs facilitate writing due to their multimodal characteristics as students can use visuals and text to improve their comprehension of core topics and different subjects. Blogs are age-appropriate tools that help students in middle school with developing lifelong attitudes and skills such as cooperation, solidarity, and equality. Finally, blogs support the systematic development of the writing process towards major writing requirements in middle school and college. Well, I want to thank you so much for your participation on our online training. And I hope all of these recommendations can be useful for you as a teacher. Um, for ESL teachers in particular, I would like for all of them to think about the advantages of using blogs in the ESL classroom. As we have mentioned before, the advantages are unlimited, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you, and goodbye.